Good afternoon. This is Dr. Jeffrey Miller from Baltimore, Maryland. I'd like to, to review today uh, class 2 correctors and how they may be harmful uh, to uh, some of our orthodontic patients. And basically, this is about the difference between reviewing our results with two-dimensional x-rays, mainly a cephalometric x-ray, and uh, looking at individual teeth post-active orthodontic treatment with a comb beam CT. And I think what happens is with the um, cephalometric x-ray, it tends to uh, appear that there's more bone around the teeth than there actually are, especially when you're dealing with class 2 uh, correctors and uh, class 2 alveolar anatomy related to the class 2 uh, skeleton. Uh, Anyway, uh, my name is uh, Jeffrey Miller. I graduated from Towson University, uh, received my dental education from University of Maryland, uh, my orthodontic certificate from SUNY Buffalo, my board certification in 1991. I've been in private practice in the Maryland area for almost 35 years now. I'm a member of the Golden Circle of Excellence, the 3M, and I've spoken uh, both nationally and internationally on cone beam CTE topics uh, related to orthodontic uh, treatment planning and diagnosis. I'm also a member of the Maryland State Dental Association, the AATA. The, I'm a diplomat of the American Board of Orthodontics. I'm a region of the American Association of Orthodontic Foundation and a member of the American Association of Orthodontists. When we talk about cephalometrics, uh, we're really looking at a focal trough that's very wide uh, compared to what we can get from a uh, comb beam CT. So you're looking at structures that are superimposed. So it's very difficult to, to tell what's going on on an individual tooth, um, when it, especially as it relates to its position in the alveolar housing. So here is a case five years post-active orthodontic treatment. This is the reconstruction of the Panorex and the cephalometric x-ray from the comb beam CT. Uh, if you notice the teeth are out of occlusion, uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, it's not germane to this talk uh, this evening. But if you take a look at the lower left lateral incisor from the, both the pan and the ceph, it looks completely normal. However, when you start looking at that from a comb beam or a 3D perspective, uh, you get a different picture. You see how the tooth is is pushed outside of the alveolar housing. And when I say that with class 2 correctors, if you're using a cephalometric x-ray to evaluate your results, the same thing uh, happens. You really get a kind of like a false sense of security that there are those uh, lower incisor roots are still within the alveolar housing. And it's the ability uh, to look at individual teeth and the supporting alveolar housing that I believe makes a difference both in the treatment planning but also in the way we evaluate our completed results. If you're looking at uh, a pan and ceph to evaluate the results of your class 2 corrector, I believe in many cases you're going to come up with a different conclusion than if you were to look at it through comb beam CT. Let's take a look at a case. This is a case that was transferred to us. Uh, this was her original uh, photographs. You can see she's a class, a mostly class one on the right, and I would say end to end on the left. She has a deep bite. She has uh, some upper lower, lower crowding and a uh, slight bolt discrepancy, as well as maybe a slight mandibular asymmetry. She was treated uh, by a Herps appliance uh, to help correct the overjet. This was the original cephalometric X-ray taken. Uh, prior to uh, a treatment. It's a pre-treatment cephalometric x-ray. Here she is uh, the day we saw her. She had been in treatment for I think about a year, a year and a half. We removed the the herps when we saw her, uh, removed the arch wires and took uh, diagnostic records. Uh, as you can see uh, from the photographs the, the uh, canines now are both class 1 uh, there is really very little overjet left, and this is how she came to us. 
And I, I'm always fascinated by uh, presentations with class 2 correctors, how well the profile looks post class 2 corrector. And sometimes I have a very hard time actually visualizing the, any difference. And I don't think this case is any, is any exception. If you look at the before and uh, after the herps correction, really isn't a much difference in the profile other than maybe the lower lip post uh, herps is a little bit more forward. Okay, so uh, how did the, how was the overject corrected? Um, there's different kind of thoughts, whether it's a skeletal uh, change, and there's an increased growth of the mandible, which I think is pretty much, that debate is pretty much settled that really that is not what happens. Or is it a dental alveolar movement where the the alveolar base moves forward with the teeth? And uh, I think that it's probably, I would say, mostly a dental correction with very little alveolar change. And here, what I did was I superimposed the alveolar process over the pre the original, showing that the overjet correction was pretty much achieved by the laying out or the repositioning of the lower incisors. And that's pretty much what I've seen with all these class two correctors. Uh, personally, I'm not a fan of the position of this tooth. It's been pushed past the limit of the alveolar housing. And keep in mind that this patient really did not have uh, what I would call a severe class two uh, malocclusion, nor is this patient doliocephalic. The patients with the longer lower faces certainly have much thinner uh, alveolar housings uh, and l which limit uh, the uh, anchorage unit or the, the repositioning of the lower uh, arch. Here's tooth number 24. You can see you know, where it is relative to the alveolar housing. This red line here uh, is approximately where you start to pick up alveolar bone as you scan from the clinical crown down to the apex of the root. Obviously, there was no comeb CT to start with, so I have no idea how much bone was around that tooth to start, but I would guess uh, it was a lot more than what's there now. And here's tooth 25. You can see tooth 25 still has some lingual uh, cortical plate, but this is approximately where the facial bone or the buccal cortical plate starts as recognized on a comb beef CT. This is a, a multi uh, view. It's the axial, the coronal, and the sagittal view. But this is adjusted to look so that the, the axial view is aligned with the anatomy of the alveolar housing. In other words, this green line indicates that we're adjusting the axial view to look straight down the alveolar housing. And you can kind of see where this is where we first start to pick up bone at approximately that where that red line is which comports with the axial view. By the way, in case you're wondering, this 3D reconstruction looks pretty bad, but it has not been adjusted to uh, comport or represent the individual slices. These things are not really diagnostic, they give you a general idea. And here is that interceptal bone. You can see here is uh, the interceptal cortical plate. The position of the root of 224 is approximately where that yellow dotted line is. So that gives you an idea how much the tooth was pushed through uh, the limitations of the alveolar housing. Here we've compensated for the, at the position of the tooth. We've, we're looking straight down the long axis of the tooth, and we start to pick up bone right about here where this red line is, and this axial view shows that uh, that's where the teeth start to you know, vest or be surrounded by, by bone. The other thing that sometimes you see with class two correctors is as you're building anchorage, you're putting rectangular full thickness wires in to uh, help prevent these teeth from 
torquing out or from or from proclining. So you're putting in uh, resistance to that movement by putting labial root torque on, as if that would correct it. Uh, these class two patients generally have uh, alveolar anatomy that is consistent with the uh, shorter lower um, with a shorter lower jaw, and uprighting the teeth by torquing them probably will make the situation worse. And that's what it looks like. This is just a, a 3D diagram showing that that tooth, if it was torqued, the apex would even come out further. And I think, you know, you can go around and uh, probably find images that uh, are exact post-treatment herps or other class 2 correctors that look just like that. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, you can certainly email me at drmiller at orthodontocosos.com. If you're interested in joining Aviolar uh, Focused Orthodontic Face Book Group, uh, please email me if you're interested. Thank you very much.